Welcome to the house that beer built. Heck yeah, or stone built, like our big stone. Come on in, show you around. Hi everybody, I'm Steve Gonzalez. Uh, I work for Stone Brewing Company. Uh, thank you to for coming to the uh, uh, Virtual Beer Fest. I guess if you're coming here, you're coming here virtually, right? Uh, they're here virtually, Steve. Yeah, I'm Jeremy Monier, by the way. Also part of Stone. And yeah, man, we got, we got all these people that are here and they're ready to taste beer. Check it out. So, thanks for being here with us. I'd actually prefer it always be virtual with you. Mm, yeah. Just kind of, you know, you just call in from now on. It's funny, our offices are right next to each other, and sometimes it's just a meeting with the two of us, and we still call into it. I just prefer talking to him when in a different room. I don't know. Is that what it's all about? It just seems to work better. Mm. I don't know. Just a thing. But anyway, no, thanks for coming out, guys. It should be a great day. Uh, we got a lot of great beers to check out. Um, Steve and I love each other, by the way. Not, you know, well, you're gonna cut that for sure. But Steve, Steve and I have worked together for a long time and it's really a pleasure for us to hang out and do this virtual beer festival. We've got a lot of killer beers to go over with you, show you around the grounds and the brewery, and it should be a good time. When you're coming up with beer recipes, sometimes they can be really difficult and it takes a lot of uh, test brews and a lot of iterations to really dial it in. And there's, then there's the ones where you just nail it the first time and you don't even think about it that much. And Stone IPA was one of those, just uh, kind of out of necessity because you know it was a little bit less than a year into it and we were so busy and didn't have a lot of time to come up with a recipe and to do that. Didn't do, I don't believe we did a pilot batch or anything. We just brewed it on the 30 barrel system at Mottaway and uh, that was it. We were really happy with the way it came out and uh, other people would eventually feel the same, you know. Stone IPA is one of the prime examples of a West Coast IPA, you know, as, uh, as we know it in craft beer history. You know, unlike some of our beers that were received really well immediately and grew really fast, IPA was a little bit of a slow, slow grower. We were changing the world at that point because, I mean, like I said, there were a couple of good IPAs around, but not well known or much beyond San Diego or maybe a couple of other spots at that time. Uh, you know, we were changing people's palates and really throwing something pretty aggressive and new at them. I mean, mostly the reaction that we got was, well, it's really bitter, you know. <laughs> you know, I can't think of anything that I'd change with Stone IPA. I mean, obviously, I'm looking back and seeing how successful it was, but, you know, even with all the changes that have gone on in the, uh, in the craft beer world and, uh, you know, how many good beers have come out, great beers have come out, it, it feels pretty special that Stone IPA is still as popular as it is, and uh, I'm pretty proud of that.
of all, you drunks at the virtual beer fest? <laughs> While you're enjoying your fresh cold beer, we're gonna introduce our latest music video. Chillin' time! <laughs> Stone is here in Escondido, California. We also have a brewery in Richmond, Virginia. Like I said, we got one in Napa. We have one at Liberty Station, which is uh, actually a Navy station, a former Navy station, which is why it's called Liberty Station. Fun fact, it's in the old, um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Not the canteen, but you know, the dining hall, the dining hall for the Navy base. So that's where that restaurant is and, and brewery. Uh, Stone was founded in 1996 by our co-founders, Steve Wagner and Greg Cook. Uh, so Steve Wagner was in a band and he actually played in that band and uh, had rented some recording studio space from Greg Cook, who owned recording studios. And then they took some brewing classes together because they wanted to start a brewery and recognize each other. And the rest is history, I guess. Uh, I like to say a lot that um, Innovation, what my focus here at Stone is, it's our history, it's our heritage, uh, it's our present for sure, but it's also our future. We're always working on new things and, and trying to give everybody the best beers we can make and the most innovative beers we can make. 
and it, it seems to work last time I checked. Uh, you know what? Yeah, it does work, I promise. Uh, I'm drinking Arrogant Bastard right now. I said surprise me, and this is what they brought me, and I find it quite enjoyable. Uh, Greg loves the story about this beer that I think they were making a pale ale, I believe it is, and uh, there was a miscalculation and they actually doubled all the ingredients and really, really, really liked it. So that's where Arrogant Bastard came from. A stone, or sorry, not, not stone, Arrogant Bastard Ale, uh, which is not it's a separate entity from Stone Brewing Company, sort of, but same owners, whatever, it's complicated. Um, Always hits the spot. <laughs> My name is Irene Cook, the mother of Gregory Cook, who's a co-founder of Stone Brewing. He was born in Long Beach, California. Before he went into kindergarten, we moved to Pataskal, Ohio, wow. 1968, and Greg was four. So was he like a, a Gregory growing up? Like when did he oh, become he Greg? Was, he was an isolationist. He didn't have a lot of friends particularly. Gregory was a loner. So what'd you talk about when I wasn't in the room? We talked about you. That doesn't sound like a very interesting subject. I talked about all the things you did that were bad when you were a kid. <laughs> okay, help me remember, because I don't like remember doing you anything used, bad. You were a loner. You didn't care anything <laughs> about anybody else. Well, uh, um, actually, that's not true. I know that wasn't true. Well, maybe I wanted, not. like a lot of kids, you know, I wanted to be liked. I wanted to be popular and, you know, this kind of stuff, and it was yeah. pretty far from it. Yeah. Were you surprised at all when he came and said, you know, hey, mom, I'm, I'm going to change direction? I was direction. never surprised at anything Greg did. He was, he was a very different person as he grew up. Has he always been so driven and pugnacious about a thing he becomes passionate about? Was that like a characterization you could even he see lost, back in high he school? He lost that for a while. I came out to visit him one time when he was in college, and he lacked ambition, he lacked drive. He says he doesn't, didn't even see a reason to get up in the morning because he had nothing that really interested him. And then I think when he met Steve, he just really found a purpose in life. He decided that after meeting Steve, he wanted to open a brewery. Well, that was, I believe, just about the time when a lot of the microbreweries were going out of business because there wasn't a market for it. The market hadn't been made. And I think Greg was very instrumental, but not alone, in setting up and making a market for the craft breweries. So we have some beer sitting in front of us. Did you ask for these to be? Uh... I did. I haven't had those in a long time. I want some. Now I got it. There we go. You so I'm pouring myself you. a little bit because it's the middle of my work day and I have- Well, I, what do you think I do? I have to stay awake the rest of the day. Well, that, that, that's up to you. Cheers. Do you like that? Oh. You know, a lot of people are afraid of this beer. How could they be afraid of something that is so delicious? What would you say to somebody who is afraid or, 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 you know, says, oh, it's too hot. I think they're silly. I think you should drink what you enjoy. You've got enough yeah. beers Let's... to drink whatever you enjoy. This is Steve Gonzalez again, and I'm here with a Tangerine Express, a Stone Tangerine Express Hazy IPA. Uh, I created this beer actually many years ago, and I created it for one customer that we had on the East Coast, and it was only 52 kegs that went to New Jersey and to Pennsylvania. And it almost just kind of didn't become anything after that, but uh, it just so happened that the Craft Brewers Conference was in Philadelphia that year. And we landed there and our sales reps said like, what's up with that beer, man? We would crush that in cans. That's a terrible Philadelphia accent, I apologize. I'm so sorry. Uh, so the customer had asked for uh, a beer that was very, very tropical. They wanted a tropical style IPA. 
so tangerine and pineapple is what, what I settled on and gave this to them, they loved it. And there's eight hops in here. I wouldn't have made it so complicated, I think, if it was only gonna be 52 kegs. Uh, we haven't changed the, the recipe a bit in this. It's still the same, uh, same grape beer. Uh, Greg went out, Greg Cook, our, our, our co-founder, he went out that night and I guess tasted this beer. The sales reps put it in front of them and they're like, what is up with this? This is amazing. And I got an email from my boss, our brewmaster, and he said, what is in Tangerine Express? I need to know right away. And I, th I said then, I think I know why. Uh, so I think it was a little over a year after that, uh, we worked on, we just worked on how to brand it and everything. And it was going to be a special release. And then we, we decided to go core with it. Uh, to this day, I, I don't think I've ever had another beer that has tangerine and pineapple in it. Uh, pineapple, pineapple's so interesting because it comes from all over the place. And I think right now our pineapple is coming from Thailand. Uh, tangerine comes from California. I'm a California native. And I think that's really cool. California was a giant a giant citrus producer for forever. And then Florida kind of became the big citrus powerhouse in, in the United States. And citrus kind of started going away and now it's kind of back in California because we make the best tangerine. Uh, let's give it a taste here. Aromas of really bright tangerine and you get that tangerine pithiness, bitterness, there, it's also got a very high uh, hop bitterness in here, uh, both analytically and the flavor profile. Uh, a lot of hops in here, and for me, the mosaic is always kind of the most prominent note uh, in this in this beer. But very complex hop profile, not too sweet. Um, I won't tell you the exact percentage, but it's under five for both fruits and uh, a lot of like that citrus oil in there as well, which kind of adds to the aromatics and, and almost like kind of a, a perfumey note in there. So Stone Tangerine Express, uh, Hazy IPA, it's still doing great. And uh, we're glad everyone in the country gets to enjoy it. Everything that we make, you know, we have a huge spirit of ownership here. We have our names on all these bottles, cans, and kegs of beer. When you have like a culture of freshness, you have a belief in everything that you're making it has to be perfect. It's true, you know, that folks, when they buy their beer or whatever they purchase in the, in the trade, they want to see when that stuff was made. I know for a fact that looking at places that sell a lot of beer, where I could only find one, one brewery that puts a package on date and an enjoy by date, and that's Stone. Freshness starts right there with the raw ingredients. We go out to the, literally the place where the hops are grown right there in the field. We do hand selections of all of our processed materials. You know, everything that we do on the brew house side to eliminate points of ingress. Uh, we have calm fills for all of our kettles. All the, uh, the beer that's transferred to the fermenters is monitored. Something that drives freshness is your ability to control yeast health, yeast growth, yeast viability. The packaging is like the biggest deal because, I mean, you've done all this work, you know, for like weeks and weeks to make sure that the beer is perfect, make sure all your raw materials are great, beer tastes good, you know, and everything is true to brand. You know, it's the best NYPA I can make. It's the best delicious so we can make Ripper and everything like that taste perfect. You know, packaging side is where a lot of the engineering happens. So like all the big noisy equipment over there, everything is like timed perfectly to make sure that everything gets put into a can, bottle, keg, you know, safely. The beer is uh, protected in the sense that we have effective bottle purging. We have cans being purged. We shoot the top of the beer with CO2 to drive out any more headspace air right before we put a cap on it. So then it's a perfectly sealed package. And then for the bottle side, we hit the, uh, the beer with a jetter to make sure it foams over right before we cap it. The Quality Lab has like shutdown authority for all steps of the process. Basically at the end of the day, a box of beer will have about 158 touch points. Uh, that'll determine that this beer is perfect and ready to go.
How's everybody doing? This is Christopher Leva with the Fallen Dove saying a shout out to my buddies at the Rockstar Beer Festival and the Virtual Beer Festival. On behalf of the Fallen Doves, we're hoping you're having a blast. I'm here listening to the Rolling Stones, enjoying a fancy cocktail. Catch you guys soon. Rock and roll. You have reached the voicemail box of... Gonzalez, our small batch brewer who created this beer, was sitting there tasting with Todd Carnig, the vice president of sales for Stone. And they were talking about the beer and breaking it down. And Steve thought he was like, oh, it's kind of like a Mai Tai. And Todd looked at him and said, no, this is really like a scorpion bowl. Like big, tropical, juicy, the mandarin of Bavaria, the laurel, and the mosaic hops that we use in this beer create this bright effervescence. You're getting pineapple, mango, you get nice like mandarin orange character coming to it. The laurel is gonna add a little bit of that nice kind of grassy, earthy tones and sweetness. You get all these beautiful tropical fruit notes in the beer, but there's no fruit actually added in the beer. It's all coming from the mosaic, the mandarina bavaria, and laurel hops. For a 7.5% alcohol beer that weighs at 57 IBUs, this beer is super crushable. From us at Stone, cheers to having a scorpion bowl with all of you.
Hey you guys, I'm back. Let's talk about more beer, huh? How about Stone Scorpion Bowl IPA? This beer is super tropical. First thing you get when you take a big whiff, it's like big time tropical fruit. You get that in the flavor as well. So you might be saying, well, so what kind of fruit do you put in? And this is the very cool thing about hops. So we do a lot, lot of work with hops. A uh, big part of my job too. And to maintain our hop relationships, going out to different hop areas every year, whether it be in America or over in Australia or New Zealand, um, always looking for the next hop and also blend of hops and what we can do. And this is a great example of what you can do when you put hops together. So Mandarina Bavaria, Mosaic, and Laurel. And no fruit in this beer, so you throw those three hops together, and man, it seems like you put tropical fruit in the beer, but again, just from hops. And why did we call it Scorpion Bowl? It was funny because we were sitting around doing our executive taste panel, and we were pushing this beer as a possible release, and our CEO said, whoa, that reminds me of one of those old tiki drinks. You know, the one that you light on fire? Scorpion Bowl. So it's the one time that we named a beer right off the bat. And a little secret for everybody out there, the hardest thing in brewing is naming beers. Actually, brewing is a lot more simple than naming beers. I think we nailed it here in uh, awesome tropical flavors and aromas. Cheers. Stone, release the gargoyle. I'm Lizzie Youngin, I'm the Director of Communications for Stone Brewing, and you are here for Stone Trivia. Stone's Gargoyle. Is it named Bob, Greg, Johannes, or does it not have a name?
Ripper. Remember Ripper? Yeah, so Ripper, it's an Australian term for a surfer, but uh, uh, opinions differ on what the name means because one of our founders actually says the name Ripper is based off of a, uh, a song. The Ripper by, uh, what was the name of that band? The, the, with the guy wore, that wore leather and a hat and all that. He lives in San Diego. Man, I'm totally blanking, man. Well, anyway, <laughs> he said it was named after the song, but the, our marketing team says it was named after Australian surfers. That'd so be good trivia. Sure if somebody knows the answer to that trivia because Steve and I are old and can't remember shit, <laughs> then that would be pretty cool to know that answer to that trivia question. It's also Australian for like a ripping good time, right? Is it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Like you got a roadie and you're going to a ripper. I'm not going to try to do my uh, Australian accent because it sucks. You could probably do an Australian accent. Uh, the better part of Down Under. Yeah, it was really bad. Yeah, it was terrible. Yeah, uh, it I apologize. Yeah, but the beer's great. This <laughs> this is really actually an awesome beer. Um, we're known for making tons of IPAs, but we do make some other styles, and this is more in that pale ale kind of vein of things, and a little more malty. Still hoppy though, because we're stone. Yeah, so it's a very very hoppy beer. Uh, it's uh. The definition of what a pale ale is has changed a lot over the years. You know, I, I hardly even know what the hell a pale ale is uh, these days. And I've been brewing for a long time, or maybe I've just forgotten, like Jeremy said. You but, might have forgotten. Yeah. Probably forgot. I haven't brew, I've been brewing professionally since 1995, or maybe it was 1994. I forgot. The lines are probably blurring for Steve just because they always blur anyway. So, you know. I'm way older than you. Way older. Like three weeks, I think. I think it's about three weeks. But he's the older brother I never wanted. So I mean, the older brother that I love. That came out bad. <laughs> You're probably picking up on a theme here. Uh, we've talked a lot about Australia in this tasting. Uh, I think I have to throw this whole thing out. But yeah, we, we, we do a lot of stuff with Australian hops, and this is no exception. There's a, there is a ton of Aussie stuff in here. Steve and I both have had the great opportunity of going to Australia, and it's um, besides just amazing country, amazing people, but amazing hops and hops that are unique only to Australia. Um, so pretty cool, and that really comes through in this beer, along with some American hops too. So we did a nice blend, um, but super good. I, I still, whenever I go back to this beer, I, I'm stoked on it. Uh, this is my monthly case this month. As a matter of fact, I am getting this as my monthly case because I love to drink it at home. I took your monthly case. Sorry, you were gone up in Napa, so mm. maybe next month's case. That's where it went. Yep. I thought I forgot to order it. Yeah, I, well, you wouldn't remember anyway. Stone, release the gargoyle.
So what um, made you guys do a, a lager opposed to your normal IPAs? Yeah, you know, like kind of like I said earlier, we're always trying to do different things. I mean, we love doing IPAs. Absolutely yeah. love doing IPAs. But, you know, it's fun to mix it up. Um, lager, still a little lighter style, yeah. a little lower ABV. Um, but we still want it to be a lot of flavor and a lot of aroma. Um, and I think you still get that. It's pretty hoppy too, wouldn't you think? Uh, it's hoppy for a lager, but yeah. it's not quite like drowning in my, uh, taking out my taste buds. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, kind of wanted to have that malt backbone that you can get in lagers, a little lighter, um, but still have a lot of flavor and aroma, kind of fruity characteristics. They, once again, you get from hops. Okay. So, yeah, a lot of fun hops in here. And actually, um, what we kind of owned or publicly, they're just out there and anybody can grow them. And we support both. Um, always looking though to kind of champion public, okay. um, champion the man so anybody can get it. Um, and cashmere is one of those hops and kind of a newer hop and kind of fun and kind of gives you that uh, berry and, and kind of a sweet candy kind of kick to it. But yeah, we were trying, I mean, <laughs> we kind of thought of it as, you know, tropical island or tropical beer. So. Great. Well, it's a delicious beer. Cheers. Cheers. What's up guys? Hopefully you are enjoying your beer so far. Rockstar has got a great surprise for you. We are going to be doing a little bit of a giveaway. So if you guys head to our Instagram um, and leave a comment about what your favorite stone beer is that is not included in tonight's box, um, you could be entered to win some lovely stuff. We've got um, some merch items, a nice hat and some jerky. So uh, go ahead and head to the Instagram and take advantage of this opportunity. No taste buds. Greg be fighting all the big names like Superman. We'll keep brewing for the cause wherever we can. Together we stand. Greg be fighting all the big names like Superman. We'll keep brewing for the cause wherever we can. Together we stand. Throw the idiot that put the white cloth from the party. Everybody's beer is quality. Quality. quality It's all about the stone brewing and our beer tea They say, Greg, why you got a 12 beer fridge when you only got 6 brews, man? But if you're a commercial man, you'll never understand We'll keep crafting beers like they cook to a brew stars And we'll keep crafting beers like they cook to a brew stars Crafting beers like they cook to a brew star.